Welcome to The Young and the Restless. I'm Victor. I'm Zach. And I'm Olivia. And this is the podcast where your subconscious is just a thing trying to drive a monkey through a jungle 50,000 years ago, and it's running into a lot of problems. Now I lay me down to sleep, I dreamt I had a soul to keep, and if I die before I wake, will that dream just go on for its own sake? Hey, Zach, guess what? My man, the myth, the legend, the enigma, this guy. Who's that? Victor? With the sweet and simple sleep. Had oh, a you dream. have a dream? I had a oh, dream. sweet. That's awesome because I have nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're talking <laughs> great. From Zach. I've had so many. It's been insane. Like, I feel like I need two other podcasts to fill. Yeah, I know we can count on you. So, Shelby, who I've been talking about, um, well, I don't know if I've talked about it on the pod. She submitted a dream a while back for those who may remember, <laughs> but, uh, she kind of does the same thing you do, Olivia, where if you tell her a story close enough to bed, she'll like put herself in it, in her dream. Huh? Wow. That's fun. Well, with you, it's, it's like a dream that I've told you, but just last night I told her a story that took like about me and, uh, an ex of mine when we were in Paris. And then she like lived it last night in her dream, but was was my ex. Oh, that's funny. That's interesting. Yeah. Just uh, I wonder if it has to do with like highly empathic people, like on a subconscious level. Or like, I just wonder if it's like how much of a, an impact it has on you, because your rubber butt dream made me laugh so hard. And I'm pretty sure that's why I had that dream. Like, I just was thinking about it a lot. Yeah. The Paris story was not that interesting, but maybe she, like, something about it grabbed her on a subconscious level. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm going to crack a beer and tell you my dream. Unconscious human. Just a grieved science is dead and magic is real. Okay. So, I wasn't in my dream at all. I was watching a movie, basically, like, or I experienced it like I was watching a movie. And it started with two different groups of people traveling, stopping at a gas station, kind of like beginning of Hills Have Eyes style, you know? It's like, oh, they're on a road trip and they're off in the country or whatever. And then there's some kind of car accident or something that brings the two groups of people together. And then they discover like a strange gated path in the woods and they go in to investigate. And once they've gone in, they find themselves trapped and are encountering like puzzles to continue. It's like they're on like a dirt path or whatever. And there's like fencing around and like Barbara, like can't get out. And they're trying to proceed down this path. And there's like little puzzles they have to solve. And uh, there's like armed guards occasionally that are like there to like give clues and then be like, keep moving or whatever. And, uh, With what little information they get, uh, they just find out that there's like a junkyard at the end of the path and that they have to get there to to escape or whatever. And and then there's some kind of like kerfuffle or whatever and someone passes out and they end up sleeping overnight in an abandoned building that's like part of the whole thing. And then the thing that uh, really stuck with me, so this whole time they're like, what is going on? What is happening? Uh, Like, we don't understand. And they're getting all this cryptic stuff from the guards. And then they get woken up by a guard who's just like fully like blasting this automatic uh, rifle like over their heads. Uh, And then he screams at them, it's redneck Willy Wonka motherfuckers. (laughs) Now move, you've got half an hour. (laughs) And then they panic and start running and trying to figure it out and uh, escape. And um, then it gets kind of like hectic and jumping around. And all I really got out of it past that point was that like a couple of the people from the original groups were like in on it. They had like lured them into oh. the trap or whatever. And then I woke up. So it was like solidly two thirds of a movie with third act problems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, it sounds like a Clive Barker movie. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a sounds like a stressful situation. Yeah, I just was like so 
so taken with the scene of the guy like blasting <laughs> his gun and screaming yeah uh, like it was it was very cinematic it was very vivid in my brain it's redneck willy wonka <laughs> so like so you mean joe exotic oh <laughs> <laughs> well i pulled up dream bible because i didn't know Ooh, you're the dream be... bible guy today am i or do, or do you want to I'm no go Take for the lead it on by that, all on means. Own, yeah, we should try. Victor can't do it for his own dreams. So I feel true. like that should be a rule. Yeah. All right. Well, I pulled up junkyard guards and puzzle. Is there anything? When you say puzzle, I'm picturing like an escape room kind of thing where it's like, is that is that what you mean by puzzle? Yeah, it's like I think my brain was pretty lazy about like yeah. exact details <laughs> of what it what it was, but it was like they needed to continue on this path, but there were like little deviations that they had to like solve a problem before okay. they could continue on. Yeah, so kind of an escape room style thing, uh, but it's like a a a path that they were trying to get to a place instead of like being trapped in a room. So like I would say one of your defining qualities like something i say about you all the time is that you're a puzzle guy <laughs> mm. like victor loves a good puzzle and most Problem things solver. are a puzzle if you look at it the right way yeah like you've got a puzzle solving brain so it makes sense that you would put that in your dream and you've been like kind of focused on puzzle stuff lately too yeah i've been like in a in a problem solving kind of place i guess What's funny is I I don't really think of myself as like a a puzzle person, really? but like I see what you're saying. But uh, ironically, yeah, I hate like riddles. A... They like I don't I don't hate them, but like I always get like performance anxiety from a riddle. Like I hear it and then my brain blanks because I'm like too. I get like test anxiety. It's right. Like I can't do a riddle. Yeah. I just feel like a riddle is like a not funny joke. Right. So whenever I <laughs> whenever I hear a riddle, I'm like, "What is it? Just tell me." Like, yeah. <laughs> but like, hear me out. You may not like solving riddles, but we just had a Halloween party a couple months ago or a month ago, and we designed this elaborate game for everybody who came there, where they had to go on a scavenger hunt, solving riddles to get to the next place to eventually find multiple lock combinations and keys to open a box that we hid under the deck and you might not like solving riddles but writing a riddle is a is a puzzle right yeah yeah or like writing a poem or lyrics or whatever right it's like how do i construct this thing that you oh, like you designing that you, the puzzle didn't you say that you've worked on like several board game ideas over the years i've been spending a lot of time on that lately that's where my puzzle brain is right now it's like, yeah that's that's definitely a puzzle when you say puzzle guy that's kind of like what he's I a puzzle guy i'm think yeah. of yeah that's so not even necessarily like strictly speaking like like all about problem solving but like the craft of of, of puzzles crafting problems for other people to solve <laughs> yeah i mean i like to i like to solve certain kinds of problems like like making a board game right it's like uh i mean i'm not good at it but i i get interested in it because it's like trying to figure out how to get all these different moving pieces to work together and come together into something that's fun right it's a challenge see so that's mostly where your puzzle brain is right now mm -hmm. last couple There's of weeks up. and also i feel like i don't know what this reminds me of is like with the designing the board games and with other puzzles that you've gotten sucked into working on is roadblocks like a series of problems that you weren't expecting to run into that mm. you then have to work through to get to the next thing right sure yeah no i see i see what you're saying yeah i mean maybe i'm stretching to just make this apply to you but like <laughs> that's what we do here that's on the, point. the young and the restless <laughs> um it also on a macro level, because you, you, first thing you said is you weren't in this dream. Right. You were, so that would make sense though, like, if you've been thinking a lot about um, crafting puzzles for other people, or it's for, you know, for the craft of it, it kind of makes sense to see it from a third party, watching mm -hmm. other people go through a puzzle that your brain made, just like on a, a, a design of the dream kind of level, like not even getting into the minutia of what it means. And I, I think it's like it, it, important context is that me and Olivia watch like a ton of horror movies. It's true. And um, this very much felt like 
like a B movie, like a <laughs> like a horror, like a bad horror movie that we would watch on any given night. And so it's like, I think my yeah, brain was trying to construct something that checked those boxes. Yeah, I was picturing the Hellraiser puzzle. Mm. You're telling the dream, which is why I, I said Clive Barker movie. <laughs> Not that that's a B movie, but but that's kind of like the mood I was picturing. But I think you are onto something, Olivia, with like um, that, like. I get sucked into stuff where it's like, you know, there's an end goal. You chug along for a while. You hit a roadblock. You try and get past it. Then you chug along for a while, hit another roadblock, try and get past it to some destination. Right. Right. Um, And at the end, there's some guy with a machine gun screaming. It's redneck redneck. Willy Wonka motherfuckers. (laughs) What did that guy look like? Do you remember? He kind of looked like uh, one of the agents from uh, the Matrix. Oh, okay. So suit and tie. Yeah. Dark glasses. Not at all like a redneck. No. <laughs> it's just the fact that he had a gun, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't, I think it was that it was like out in the woods and they're like on this like, uh, like abandoned road running <laughs> through abandoned buildings and then they're trying to get to this like burned out junkyard or whatever uh, like that. Yeah, the story of Willy the the Willy Wonka story though is like these kids, this group of people that are on this tour, right? And they're encountering like different weird situations, and slow they're getting slowly picked off by Oompa Loompas. Yeah, no, I had that <laughs> thought after I woke up. I was putting that together. I was like, so I guess that means the armed guards are Oompa Loompas, <laughs> and that there's going to be like a guy at the junkyard. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, that's the thing with because I pulled up puzzles and guards, but they both mean exactly what you think they would. There's what no is surprises. a junkyard? I, I have that too. Yeah, it's not super long. Uh, to dream of a junkyard represents your focus or preoccupation with situations or ideas that nobody else cares about. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know what this dream is about. <laughs> in, you were involved. so convinced that this was just a fun movie that you wrote in your sleep. <laughs> Olivia's right. <laughs> Did you actually about, figure it out? Right. Well, I mean, this is clear. If that's what that means, then yeah, this is about my, like, my, my, like, I get fixated on projects, right? So, like, the board game thing is a project, and I just, like, I get sucked into independent <laughs> projects that no one else gives a shit about, but that I get obsessed with and kind of hang my self worth on. Here's the, the next line is involvement with interests or ideas that are noticeably uninteresting or embarrassing to people, you know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, that's, that's my life. Yeah. My life is a junkyard. <laughs> negatively, I like your projects. Negatively. Was it negative in the dream? Yeah. I mean, the junkyard was like a place they didn't want to end up, right? They wanted to end up there, but it was like... It was like kind of like the final boss of a video game, kind of. Okay. So negatively, you may feel frustration, fear, or anger about being on your own, feeling unsupported or forced to do something unpopular. Alternatively, you may feel abandoned or neglected by friends, feeling isolated with something others don't want to be a part of. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I I don't know that that resonates, but I, I think like maybe souring on like hitting roadblocks or stuff getting derailed or whatever just kind of makes sense it is kind of a solitary thing though that you're doing and like the, that last line what is it being frustrated with something that other people don't want to be involved with it's not necessarily that other people don't want to be involved as much as it's like it's a it's an independent project and the people who will want to be involved in playing your game are gonna have to wait until it's at a stage where it's playable Yeah. Yeah, it's not that I um, wish other people were involved in in projects I'm working on and no one's interested. It's very much like I seek out stuff that I can do without involving other people because I very much like to just like work on something without without having to worry about the social aspect of anything. You know, in the same way musically, right? Like I don't I don't know about you, Zach. Um, are you like a band person or do you prefer to like write and record independently? Uh. Well, mm, I guess it depends on the band. Hmm. Um, I think I, in my in an ideal world, I would prefer to be in a band. Although waiting around to do like something like 
like if you're you have parts written and you're ready to practice and you're ready to record and you're waiting on other people um to like get on the page about what night we're meeting right it's like that that's a little frustrating but the end result because I, I have a hard time like booking shows for myself i just don't have like the networking skills or the like go-getterness to like be performing on my own every night totally and so when i've had a, a band mate like who's really good at that shit and like able to book our shows all the time and i i can just show up and play that's the fucking best but that's i mean f finding a a good like a band that's the right fit is like finding a you know five significant others that, <laughs> that are all like your soulmate yeah <laughs> for sure but i also feel it like one word in that junkyard entry was embarrassed. I mean, it was specifically referring to like involvement with interests or, ide or ideas that are noticeably uninteresting or embarrassing to people you know. Yeah, I, d I don't want to get into the details, but yes, I like I've gotten sucked into projects that are like embarrassing to talk about. Uh, or, like board games are kind of like that. I don't know. I feel like a. I feel like kind of an asshole to be like, oh yeah, I'm working on a board game and you know, like I'm, I'm an adult man talking to adult people that have jobs and I feel like I sound like a 12 yeah, year old, the, you know? There's a real culture around that though. But like, I, I feel like it's hard because that's the case with almost anything creative. That's just right. like a part of having creative activities. Like I have felt that way about talking to people about this podcast like when that's what i was actually gonna t that's where i was going with this that's hmm. like the main thing that i've like that really resonated with me is like when people like, I, i'll say like oh yeah we're about to launch our podcast or like we're working on a podcast but like, like oh yeah what's it about and it's like <sighs> dream interpretation but <laughs> i like always yeah. have this hesitation to like tell them that because it sounds silly you know and it's not really about that like it's it's about other stuff but <laughs> yeah but you, that's always how it feels to talk about your music and people are like what kind and you're like well oh, you know that genre that a million people have done mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know <laughs> that, that i felt first fell in love with when i was 15 and it's like in podcasts like everyone and their mother has one so it's like i think yeah there's like it's inherently embarrassing to talk about art of any kind yeah, to anybody i feel that or like trying anything yes like anything like i feel like so like the most valuable thing i've learned like growing up or whatever is like oh everybody's just a person nobody's nobody knows what they're doing and that's really freeing of like oh there's no reason that i can't do whatever interests me right i can like follow any i'm, I'm not like blocked out of being a musician or being a creator or a business owner or whatever right like i'm as capable as any other person um and that is really valuable and i like i love that i love feeling like oh yeah i can do things uh, like it's empowering but uh then when you actually do start working on something if it's anything short of like a huge success like it always feels like anyone you're trying to talk to about it thinks you're delusional or whatever or like you know i don't know yeah especially if you're not making money on it i feel like there's a certain time in your like late tw 20s or early 30s where it starts to feel like everyone around you is only working on either their jobs or like an entrepreneurial thing and it's like it's it needs to be currently making money like it needs to it's not like a thing that, oh, maybe one day we'll make money. It needs to be like, if it's not right. making money today, you're wasting your time. Yeah, if you're not talking to sponsors already. <laughs> right, right. Like, if you don't have the book deal before you start the book. Yeah, but then, uh, like, how do you ever build anything if you never start from that place, you know? You're so. just supposed to shut up about that place. I guess so. People don't want to hear about it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And it's it's not that people aren't supportive. Like people are nice and polite, mm -hmm. but it's like you can you can see a little glint in their eye of like, oh, this guy thinks that he's gonna do something, fucking asshole. Um, Is that there though, or are you <laughs> projecting? Oh, I project a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. That's why I ask. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean that that's a place i spend a lot of time in it's like oh well i would love to do something like my job is fine but i don't feel like it is um 
fulfilling on like a creative level or like a like a life goals kind of level, right? And so I like to put my time into stuff that I think can scratch that itch of like, oh, I did this thing or like I worked on this and I feel good about it. Um, yeah, that's how I like to spend my time, but then it can sound kind of goofy talking about it. So that junkyard description resonates. Yeah. What were guards and but, puzzles? I feel like you said they were self-explanatory, just, but. Yeah, they're kind of like, they. I, I mean, I feel like they have like inherent symbolism that is pretty straightforward in the, but I pulled them up because I was expecting Dream Bible to be off the wall about it, but. To dream of jigsaw puzzles represents a multifaceted challenge or problem that you need to solve in your waking life. Trace, trying your hardest to slowly get something to work or make sense. So a puzzle means a puzzle. Gotcha. Although to dream that pieces are missing in the puzzle may reflect a waking life situation where you don't have all the facts needed to make an informed decision. Mm. Feeling that something doesn't make sense yet or that you are missing something, waiting for an answer that makes sense. That sounds like a jigsaw puzzle, though, and that wasn't really... Yeah. But I wonder if you can apply it. To dream of a guard represents you or someone else that is cautious or wary of something. A cautious attitude toward change or interference. An, un- an inability to get through to someone or an unwillingness to open up to others. An emotional guard or barrier. Negatively, a guard may also reflect feelings about something in your life keeping you out or keeping you away from something, feeling that something is too exclusive or special for you, feeling that you need to meet certain conditions before being allowed to do something. It may also reflect the sense of danger you feel stepping over a line in a relationship or a situation. Did any of that, like... Yeah, um, puzzle didn't really resonate. Some of the guard stuff felt, yeah, connected to what we'd already talked about of, like, um, feeling like, uh... Oh, I have no business, you know, working on the stuff I'm working on or like concern about roadblocks I'm going to run into or something like that or be those like, um, you know, people or um, like technical barriers or financial barriers or whatever else. Yeah. Or emotional barrier. Right. Totally. So the guns entry is super long. <laughs> I mean, what were your feelings in the dream though as a, as a third, like almost watching it like a movie? Yeah, yeah, I felt like like none of it was happening watching. to you. Yeah, I felt very separate from everything that was happening. Is there um, two questions? Anything on machine guns and anything on Willy Wonka? <laughs> <laughs> There's just a gun. <laughs> negatively, guns negatively. Whoever you see in a dream holding a gun reflects a personality trait that is in control of powerful decision making that may have serious or dangerous consequences. So if there's Willy Wonka, we can tie that to him. Hmm. You shoot something, shooting a bad person, shooting a good person, to dream of being shot, bad people with guns. Bad people with guns probably is the most on point. Bad people with guns represents negative personality traits that that control your decision making, i.e. fear, guilt, or dishonesty. It may also reflect a bad situation that you fear could get out of control, a person or situation that you feel has power or control over you, an inner conflict that's operating like an inner bully. Good people with guns are positive personality traits that are affecting your decisions, i.e. courage, confidence, honesty. That's interesting. Yeah, I I feel like um, I do have some like... uh need to go to therapy stuff that comes up when I'm working on a project that's like a, I'll, I'll throw up little barriers in my own way because I have like an anxiety about I think I do have like an anxiety of anything I work on ever actually working out like part of me is a little afraid of that for some reason mm-hmm. like this podcast like I, I have like this little bit of an anxiety of like oh well if it actually did catch wind uh I I don't know, that that spooks me a little bit, you know? (laughs) Yeah, then people would listen. Yeah, oh my God, then people would know I I exist, and I don't feel good about that. Yeah, I feel that. Nothing on Willy Wonka, though, sorry. Damn. I'm going to look up Redneck really quick. I think we've looked at him. That came up before on one of Olivia's dreams. I remember it had something to do with, like, a perception, at least, of, like, uneducation and ignorance. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, to dream of a redneck person may reflect feelings about behavior that is hopelessly ignorant or feels good completely lacking sophistication, feelings about behavior that doesn't question ignorance. That, I think, resonates with some of the stuff we already talked about, about, like... Do you, do you see yourself as the redneck, Willy Wonka? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why I... Yeah, I kind of do. I think so. The way that I'm making, like, I'm, I'm like, in there trying to put yeah. together, like, a janky board game, you know? Like, I am... And I'm trying... I'm, like, asking people, like, can you sit down and, and try this thing that I made, you know? It feels, Come like, very... Come my factory. Try yeah. my chocolates. Yeah, it's like I um I I'm not doing it at a level that merits uh respect, <laughs> you know. Well, that's the I was just talking about this the other day with somebody. That's like the duality, like that juxtaposition of redneck and Willy Wonka makes me think of that duality that like every artist has, of like self-aggrandization at the exact same time as self-hate, you know. Like in yeah. your mind, you're like, this is my Willy Wonka magical wonderland but also it sucks it really is the artist's uh struggle right like mm -hmm. you, you talked about you were working on a script with somebody it's like writing a script is very much like that like you have to do it if you ever want to do anything in that field or you want to be someone that is a screenwriter right but writing a script it's like people are going to roll their eyes at you people are going to be like oh another one of these people and then make all of these assumptions about you you know yeah that's yeah the wanting to get out of the house and write at a coffee shop but knowing <laughs> you cannot let anyone look over your shoulder at the yeah. screenplay format especially not in la is, right yeah no, especially not at intelligentsia yeah <laughs> that's our pretentious coffee shop coffee oh. shop chain <laughs> oh my god <laughs> But there's no way around it, right? Like the the solution is to like, like to just have no aspirations, right? I don't feel like that's a worthwhile place to end up either, right? No. Yeah. So you kind of have to just live with, okay, I know that people are probably rolling their eyes at me doing the thing, but it's what I want to do. It makes me happy. So I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah, I found myself really lately because of what we were talking about with the like feeling like you have to at a certain age especially when you're still broke like me you feel like everything has to be monetizable otherwise mm -hmm. you're spending time on something when you should be working towards stability right um but there are certain art forms that i keep to myself purely as like there are ones that i do hope to make money off of and even ones that i, I kind of am a little bit like um podcasting and uh, like especially editing and stuff the freelance work that i do yeah, And then there are ones that I hope to make money off of, or at least gain recognition from, like music. Yeah. And then there are ones that I don't give a fuck if I even get better. Mm. I just, yeah. it's just relaxing, like drawing. That's how yeah. I feel about drawing. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that uh, I really resonate with that. And, and like, I will take on new hobbies in that lowest rank uh, often. Like, I'll be like, I'm going to start knitting and like, I'll knit hats and like, I'll wear the hats I knit, but I'm not trying to do anything with it. It's just a thing I like to do. Like, yeah, I've been trying, like intentionally trying to spend more time with those. Yeah. As a, as a form of like, in, enjoying time. Mm -hmm. The pressure's like, off. I have like a real productivity addiction and, uh, that's, that's the, th that's a thing that I struggle with. Like I, I, I crave a thing like that where I can just like not worry about anyone ever seeing it or it ever being productive at all. Like just doing a thing for me uh, that uh, I also don't have any like aspirations around. And it's like, I, 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 I want to be the kind of person that can do those things. But whenever I try, I just like, I, I, I get sucked into how can I market Something else? This? <laughs> yeah, I'll get sucked into that or I'll get sucked into like... Like the craft of it? Exactly. Or like wanting to be good at it, you know? Like wanting yeah, to be yeah. like really good at it. That's what I catch myself doing that with drawing all the time. I'll be like, you know, drawing a figure and then find myself being like, it's not what a hand looks like, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and it's like, well, I wouldn't be talking to myself like this if I were like relaxing in the tub, having a bath. It's like, but that's what this is supposed to be right now. Right. I'm just drawing. We tried whittling recently. We did. Olivia cut the shit out of herself. 
<laughs> but it was relaxing up to that point. You were enjoying it. Yeah, up until and the point I thought I had to take you to the hospital. <laughs> everything was really relaxing. Was a lot of blood. Let's say you got to the point where you're like, this doesn't look like a chipmunk and you stabbed yourself <laughs> out of frustration. So what, um, did we crack your dream, you think? Yeah, yeah. I didn't think there was anything there, but yeah, it's about... It's about my projects. It's about getting sucked into projects and feeling weird about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first things Olivia said to me when she met me. It was like, I think you have a productivity hang up. <laughs> <laughs> and now, yeah, I know where she learned to recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't from Victor. <laughs> was, it, was it from you? Probably. But really, my dad's like the OG productivity hang up guy. Yeah, so that's not going to trickle down to you in any way. Yeah, we'll see, I <laughs> guess. <laughs> yeah, like, that dream is about how I feel talking about this right now, which is, like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed even getting into the fact that I, like... That you're embarrassed? Th that I have, like, projects I like to work on that I'm, like... Oh, yeah, I've spent the last couple of weeks, like, getting really sucked into trying to design a board game, you know? Like, that's embarrassing. I don't know why it's embarrassing, but it is. It's like, oh, I should just be, like, plodding along with my day job dutifully doing that. You know, I have, like, so many friends. I get invited to so many board game nights. It's, like, definitely a whole thing. Yeah, it's yeah. not just it's relegated <laughs> to kids at all. Yeah. But, but yeah, not none of those friends are making one, so... So that's pretty nerdy. But, yeah, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking do you? But the, when you, yeah, when you said you didn't even want to get into like the details, I didn't know if you meant like you didn't want to get into like the genre of the board game or like because <laughs> I was like, no, you don't need to tell us what each dice roll means. But like, I, I don't know how much you were obfuscating, obfuscating there out of like embarrassment. Uh, that's not know. me trying to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, let me run inside and grab my spreadsheets. I'll send them over to this computer <laughs> and start going through uh, item descriptions on the pod. <laughs> Just put them up in the drive so we can post them to Instagram. There you go. So does that answer your question? <laughs> my qu I don't think I really had a question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we cracked it. I'm a nerd. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> but no, I think it's, I mean, we can move on. But I also, I don't think like board game design is any nerdier than like any other puzzle per se because like like you said like when it, you really break down what making music is or any other writing mm -hmm. like anything yeah. it is all little puzzles yeah um and, and like the more like go ahead no no you go ahead i was just saying the more of those you pick up the more things you get into and start to learn the craft of the more you realize there there's ov overlap in that like fundamental pu uh, puzzle making aspect of everything we were just talking about that we were over like working on uh like we were working on ranch stuff oh yeah we, we were fixing a hot wire fence right but we were doing we were doing like some outdoorsy stuff and we were walking back and olivia was like i i didn't realize how like puzzle like this kind of work is you know and mm -hmm. yeah that there's kind of puzzles in everything once you understand what you're doing yeah once you understand what you're working on yeah, what your goal is, what your limitations are, what the challenge is. Everything is kind of a puzzle if you look at it that way. And, like, even the things that you dread doing, like, I don't know, like, it's when you have that framework, it can be enjoyable when you're looking at it as a puzzle mm. to solve. Any number of little things can be a puzzle. And I think when you look at them that way, they can be fun. Yeah. I was going to say, I wonder how much of, like, your embarrassment is, like, because I, I have this type of embarrassment that has to do with like, yeah, like you said, like this fucking guy, like worried about coming off as arrogant. Like you're just going to mm -hmm. like, like you've already gotten, you know, a certain number of people to hear your music and think of you as like a great songwriter and a great lyricist. And maybe you're afraid that like, they're going to be like, oh, so you're making games now? Mm -hmm. Like how many, how many things do you want to uh, have? But, <laughs> but it is like, there's so many like if if you become really good at one thing, like when Nick and I were working on our script, we I found myself constantly referencing music because he'd be like, "What's the point of this scene?" And I'd be like, "Oh, dude, well this is like the bridge. Mm. Like we, it, it's kind of a mood piece that gets us from Act Two to Act Three. And may, you know, maybe we scrapped that scene because it didn't actually work like music in that case. But I think just the yeah the foundations of one kind of lends itself to being able to like 
get into another. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, and songwriting really is like, it can be, depending on the kind of songwriting you're doing, it can feel like puzzle solving, you know, like I get really into writing lyrics and that very much feels like you've created Poetry. a puzzle that you're then solving. Right. And like, yes. Yeah. Especially if you get really into like the meter and like, like words have to be pronounced it like naturally to flow correctly. And so you find yourself cracking open a thesaurus and right. looking at the, the etymology of words to make sure you're using them right. It, it, it does become very English lit. Yeah. Cause where people get stopped there, I think is like, they're looking at a blank page and they don't know where to start. Right. But like very much a big part of the process is giving yourself a task, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, once mm. you've narrowed it down to a task, then you're just trying to accomplish that task. It's not about working with like, open infinite potential right it's yeah. like you narrowed it down to uh yeah. a goal you know yeah limitations are huge yeah and if there aren't like like with some of the most like creative times in my life have been in film school when i had like yeah a when prompt. i was making a short yeah and yeah. well and like a hundred bucks to your name yeah uh, ideas for those assignments come from like well what can i actually do like right. i know two good actors <laughs> right i have access to this place yeah creativity within confines is like that's where it thrives, I think. Um, and I think if you're trying to, something Victor says a lot is like, you're, if you think you're going to write your masterpiece, if you sit down and you're like, try to make your masterpiece, you're not going to make anything good yes. at all. Yeah, that's like one of the biggest traps is like sitting down like, okay, I'm going to write the best song I ever wrote. I'm going to write the best script I ever wrote. I'm going to, I'm going to do something that's going to be amazing blow everybody's mind you're never you're not gonna write anything or you're gonna write something shitty This dream is kind of like a two-parter though and I'm not sure if I should just do one one half or the other because there's only one tiny itty bitty detail that links the two and it's kind of like they might just be completely separate dreams. Cut the last segment down to a tight five and uh, just make it all about this. Victor, <laughs> <laughs> you got so uncomfortable when you realized your dream was actually about you. I don't like when it means something. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> We put ourselves in the hot seat. You got to take a turn every now and then. You can't be the fun dream Bible guy all the time. <laughs> I don't, I'm not comfortable with the whole premise of this podcast. I think <laughs> <laughs> our subconsciouses should be shut off. It's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> you like had the same position in that dream as you do on this podcast as like the, the narrator. Hmm. Yeah. So you thought maybe it would just be like not about you. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping. <laughs> but that's part of the fun, though, is is listening to somebody else read the Dream Bible and then being like, oh, shit. Yeah, no, like when, it when is something, fun. When something hits. Yeah. Fuck anyone who judges you for being embarrassed about your little games. <laughs> <laughs> about your adorable little game. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so it started off at a school, and then suddenly we had to go through airport security in the school. Um, and it was really crowded and chaotic. I'm waiting in a line and I see that there's escalators that are malfunctioning and the people who are on them, the stairs are like collapsing and the people are falling down the escalators. And I'm with like a family friend and suddenly somebody steals my laptop and they run up this flight of stairs and I start to follow them the direction that they go, but the friend grabs my wrist and takes me a short like to a shortcut and up the stairs where the guy ran there's a security office and so we like catch the guy he i think he kind of attacked me and like at, at a point but they, there were security guards there and they really quickly got him and handcuffed him um and like i was looking for the laptop and found it and then we're in this room where there is what looks like a robotic owl playing a VR game. So there's this little robot owl 
that has put a little VR headset on and it's flying around playing a VR game. Cute. It was kind of cute. Yeah. And I, but I said something like that looks like a waste because <laughs> it's a robot and like you've got this, like it's just using this thing like that is for people to use for fun, I guess. And it is what's VR. the point of it <laughs> is, is what I was insinuating, I guess. And the family friend of mine was like, yeah, you're right. And he takes a gun and like grabs the owl. Oh, yeah. The gun was also sort of like hooked into a steady cam rig. So it was like this complicated situation where he's holding this like like a movie rig and trying to shoot the owl, which is flying around um, playing a VR game. And so he shoots the owl and uh suddenly the owl is not an owl but it's like a woman's head that had little robotic owl wings and there's blood everywhere and the friend is disturbed i think he said oh shit it's a borg it's a cyborg or something so it was like a that was like a person i guess that we uh, that it was murdered now so now we're cleaning up a murder and there are three rugs and they all have blood on them and they're all white there's all these people in the room now and I'm trying to tell them that you need to dab it with cold, with a cold, <laughs> damp towel. You need to dab it. Cold water. Don't scrub it. And they're all scrubbing these rugs. And I'm like, no. Uh, <laughs> and so I eventually convinced them to let me take the rugs and I, I take them to the bathroom. Um, oh, what? Well, I went into the bathroom to get to to get a cold damp towel but all of the faucets like i tried all there were like five sinks and they all had like a a hot and a cold knob but all of the knobs were hot um and so i ended up taking the rugs and putting them in a bathtub and filling the bathtub with bleach um and it seems like the blood came out of two of the rugs and then there was a third one that kind of looked like a sheepskin that like it was like hairy it was like furry and the blood was not fully coming out of that one i'm just gonna take a breath here that was part one <laughs> wow okay so but to like really condense just wrap my head around it like uh there there was an owl playing vr and then it turned into a woman's face and someone shot it and that's what bled on the yes. sheepskin yeah it was a, okay. it was a head it was like a woman's head and the shooting of that is what Blood on everything. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So then part two here. Very different setting. Picture like old dirt country road, bright and sunny. Uh, and we're like walking. I don't know who I'm with. We're walking back up the road to like go get something. Um, and there's this other group of people who are also looking for something. And we come up over this hill and we see there's canoes in the middle of the road and i'm like oh those are our canoes that's what we needed and the guy was like no those are mine and like was trying to take our canoes <laughs> and uh uh yeah we beat him with a paddle um and then we got in our canoes which no longer made sense i guess to my brain so it turned into like rail bikes on a railroad track because <laughs> 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 i don't know how you canoe on a dirt road <laughs> Okay, so we're like we're like pedaling these rail bikes and they're kind of like unicycles, honestly. They were very like wobbly and tall. Um then suddenly there's this trolley car full of people and it's like real clear that they are like a cult. Like they are wearing cult dresses, they are singing hymns, and there's one old guy with a beard and everyone else is adult women and then there's like some children but no adult men. Sounds like a cult. It was a cult. They're like kind of trying to cut us off on the rails. And then there's this other trolley car and this guy is telling us like, don't go with them. Don't go with them. And we're like, I don't think we're planning on it. Um, but they cut us off and we're like, suddenly we're off the off of the bikes. And I see Victor going over to the trolley car full of the cult people. Um, Wait, what? From where? Was I the person with you up to this point? I guess. I don't know. I, this was the first time I saw you. You were suddenly there. Uh, I think you were... Yeah, I think we, there was something about us getting separated because I realized you had the dogs with you. Mm. And I and Casper ran up to me and like greeted me and I hadn't seen him in a minute. There was... 
something about us getting separated, I guess. But when I looked down at Casper, I saw that sheepskin rug with the blood stain. Hmm. Just for like a split second, and then it was normal. Then I didn't see it again. Were they draped over the dog or in the dog's mouth? Like it was his fur. Oh. And then we go up to the trolley car because I guess we're just getting in. And um, there's a woman with this like slop bucket of like looked like rotten meat and like hair. It was so gross. I it was very gross. She's going to try and feed it to our dogs. And I was like, was like, stop, please don't. They will have diarrhea. Um, And then she's like, oh, okay." And we got on to the trolley car, which is now a boat and the sorry i'm so sorry it's a lot the cult leader guy is like welcome i've been waiting for you for a thousand years you guys specifically and i'm like great great and i don't know suddenly we're in a group where there's like there's like seven of us or something but me and victor and like some other people we like come on to the boat and they're all singing at us and like i'm checking out the space and i'm noticing there's ice cubes everywhere there's like ice cubes on the floor and i'm like that's kind of weird and then i come back to the cult leader guy and i was like this is a beautiful home you have there are ice cubes in my pocket and he was like yeah they're in your bikini too and i'm like i'm not wearing a bikini (laughs) and um it felt like creepy like sexual and like weird i did not like it and there's this little boy next to him who's like, make her take off her bikini. And um, I can actually, f- like, I assume that they mean underwear at this point because I know that I'm not wearing a swimsuit. I don't know. And I'm, I'm wearing a coat, too. Like, I'm fully clothed. Um, but I can feel ice cubes in my clothes. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to try and move past this. So I ask him, like, where can me and my husband sleep and he has this reaction like oh no 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 you won't be sleeping with your husband here and i woke up and victor was gone <laughs> live that happened what are you talking about <laughs> that's all that was like last weekend <laughs> that was our honeymoon yeah <laughs> you don't remember the airbnb yeah you don't I remember forget. That? oh we did have a weird airbnb <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you have a hard out at five? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not really, but... Uh, no. You have become a silhouette, by the way. Should I go turn on the light? Um, Do you want to see us, Zach? It's not of the utmost importance. Sometimes facial expressions help me understand social cues, but... <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. I'll, <laughs> I'll turn on the Fucking light. neurotypical. <laughs> um, okay, should I read so, the cliff notes? That I jotted down? Yeah, because I I gave mine after the first part and then I got wildly lost in the sauce. So just real quick, the connection is sheepskin rug with blood stains equals Casper's fur. And Casper is our dog. One of our dogs for all the listeners out there. Different friendly ghosts. School airport security. Escalators malfunctioning and people falling off. Stolen laptop. Thief is handcuffed and laptop recovered. Then somehow we get to robotic owl playing VR (laughs) gun, which is also a steady cam trying to shoot the owl. The owl turns out to be a woman's head and now it's people murder. There's three (laughs) rugs, all white with blood. You got a dab bathroom, five sinks. All knobs were hot. Fill bathtub with bleach. Blood came out of two of three rub- rugs, but sheepskin still bloody. That's dream one. Yeah. Dream two. Old dirt country road. Sunny. Walking to get something. Other group looking for something. Find canoes. Fight with group for canoes. Beat guy with paddle. Got in canoes. Turned into rail bikes on rail track. Trolley cult. Woman and old guy. Victor goes over to trolley. I show up with dogs. Casper has bloody rug, in trolley, slop bucket of filth, trolley now a boat, (laughs) cult leader, welcome, been waiting for you a thousand years, ice cubes everywhere, hit on by cult guy, little boy egging on sexual harassment. (laughs) 
All right. Don't forget so that I, he said we weren't going to get to sleep in the same bed. I also, I had this. Um, uh, I, I remember putting this together in the dream because I was seeing adult women, women of all ages, one man and children who were boys and girls. Right. But no. So, like, I think they were going to kill you. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, and that I, you might be, that might be what was in the slop bucket. Oh, the last guy? <laughs> yeah. Those men? <laughs> yeah. This is an A24 It was film. really gross, and it didn't look like normal me. I think I saw, like, a, like a head in there or something. And you, you put that together in the dream. You're yeah. Like, in, within the confines of the dream, you're like, Victor's in danger because he's the only well there were other people in our group i don't know who they were um we were in a group though of like of like people i guess but in the dream you're like victor and and any man his age is in danger yeah yeah um so i figured it out (laughs) 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 but i did i noticed that dream one to me was about technology and dream two was about transportation hmm Mm. Yes. Maybe not about, but like No, yeah, those were like those, those were some were persistent the, themes. Yeah, like for real, like we were on foot, then there were canoes, then there were rail bikes, then trolley cars, then boat. Like that's crazy. And, that's a and, crazy amount. And in Dream 1 there was a laptop, VR, steady cam, robotics. Yeah. Hmm. So it's technology and then transportation. Okay. So I'm just going to start with trying to piece together this rug, this bloody rug, since that's the linchpin, right? Between the two? Yeah. Okay. So I've got sheep and then carpet because they didn't have rug. To dream of sheep represents conformity. That may be a sign that you aren't thinking for yourself. It could also indicate that you are giving in to peer pressure or doing whatever you're told. Governing others or being governed. Negatively, a sheep may reflect a fear of not doing what you're told. It may also reflect an arrogant abuse or exploitation of passive or docile people. Abuse of governing powers. Alternatively, it may be a sign that you don't like witnessing yourself fearing people or authority figures who are in a position to tell you what to do. Feeling like a loser because you have to do whatever someone else tells you to do. Alternatively, a sheep may reflect people in your life who do whatever you tell them to. So rug redirected to carpet. To dream of carpeting represents thoughts and emotions focused on comfort, luxury, and relaxation. You aren't concerned with or don't want to focus on anything uncomfortable or negative, feeling good, noticing everything under control. To dream of cleaning a carpet represents feelings about needing to maintain a comfortable situation. Carefulness to not allow a comfortable situation to become too lazy, reckless, or neglected. Reversing anything that doesn't keep a comfortable situation staying that way. So there are three of them, and you got two of them clean, and the last one had blood on it. Oh, but to dream of a rug carpet, or a throw rug carpet, represents covering something up, or disguising your true thoughts and feelings, insulation and protection, feeling better ignoring something. Mm. And, I mean, the act of, I mean, there's blood on the carpets, and you're trying to cover it up. So it's like a cover-up, right? So the rugs are part of covering up something. And then blood, I mean, let me just skim blood really quick. I imagine it's long. It is. Also, your your dream had both guns and um, guards in it, like Victor's. Yeah, that's true. Mine had security guards, yeah. They have blood on the walls, but they don't have blood on a carpet. Just in case there's a connection, blood on walls represents lingering feelings about a loss or failure. You may be unable to stop thinking about a difficulty that you overcame or a traumatic experience you've endured. Negatively, you may be unable to get your mind to get your mind of your involvement in a bad situation. The lingering part makes sense with the fact that like two out of three of them came clean and one didn't, and then it showed up in the next dream. Mm-hmm. Right, the one the one that, that you saw in Casper was the bloody one, right? Yes. And that dream definitely came second, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Are we getting any kind of clear picture on what the symbolism of this this bloody carpet is? Um, I don't know yet. But, okay, so to talk about the owl, like owls are, it's a short entry. It's just wisdom. Wisdom. Like, yeah. they're wise. To dream of a robot represents a mechanical, methodical, and rigid thinking style. Automatic thinking or responses that are not thought out. Totally straightforward or emotionless decisions, behavior that unemotionally doesn't explain itself. Okay. Um, 
To dream of a head represents intellect, attitude, personality, or perspective. What guides your choices? How a person in control of how a person is in control of themselves. Yeah, this, there's so much going on in the stream. I feel like if you can just latch onto one thing, we can kind of like explain the rest from there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm saying there's no like woman or man head. It's just head. There's blue head. Yeah, there's a blue head. Um, but, it, it, you, but you remember it specifically being a female head. Yes. Which I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if the, the gender would necessarily mean that much, except that like the the gender of the people involved in the le- like very last part of the dream seemed to mean a lot. Yeah, it did. True. To dream of a cult represents unquestioned devotion to ideas, people, or situations. Unquestioned loyalty to a family member, employer, or a superior person. Also, a side quest under head was decapitation. Does that yeah. feel like what happened to the head? No, it got Does- shot. And then right. it like well, said ultimately, something. but it never had a body, right? Well, right. I guess, <laughs> I guess, I guess it was decapitated before we got there. Before you shot it, it was a flying head, though. You know, like okay, so decapitation know. doesn't resonate. It was fine being a flying head. <laughs> did it feel evil? Like, no, like not when. No. Did you didn't. have feelings? Did you have feelings about the destruction of it? Yeah, but like guilt. Like, oh no, we made a mistake. Which is why you were so intense on cleaning the rugs. Yeah. Like you're trying to cover your tracks. Yeah. Uh, I really have to piss, so maybe we'll just take a <laughs> second to mull over no worries. all of this. Yeah, I'm going to solve it while you're gone. I hope so. I hope so, because I'm not getting anywhere. Maybe we need to get into, when we talked about your feelings of shooting the head, but like maybe we need to get into like, other feelings in the dream to like t- try to tie it into your personal life because then I think the symbolism, then we can attribute meaning to the symbolism. Yeah. Okay. Because this was just last night, right? Yes, this was last night. So you haven't had a lot of time to process. No. What it means, but but ho- hopefully the feelings are still fresh. Do you feel like you've been involved in a cover up recently <laughs> <laughs> of a final dramatic decision, or has anyone? creeped on you recently <laughs> that's such a horror movie ending too like oh you won't be sleeping next yeah. to your husband tonight <laughs> you hear like Solved vincent it. price no. delivering that line okay did we get anywhere no okay i came um, up with a strategy oh but okay let's okay yeah let's do your thing i feel like the symbolism is interconnected and there is like a through line so if we can like Maybe the next thing we focus on is Olivia's feelings in the dream. Because if we can just connect it to one thing in her real life, I feel like we can then start to explain the rest of the symbology. Okay. Okay. So I was asking her if she's tried to cover up any murders recently. <laughs> what did you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> that Airbnb owner just wouldn't let up. <laughs> Are there any like feelings that jump to mind from the dream? I'm having a hard time with it, honestly. It was really chaotic in the first part. Um, There was a lot going on. It was really crowded and overwhelming. And then the friend who who I was with was like very much a stress relieving person in that dream. Like they they helped me navigate the situation and I would not have been able to do it without them. Who is the? It's like a family friend that I like hardly ever see. Like he was at our wedding. I've seen him like once in the last 10 years. (laughs) It is interesting that like, okay, so you've got this this family friend who's like not someone that's a big presence in your life. And yeah. then in the second dream, you had like a mystery companion. You're um, not having, like you weren't sure who was with you. There were like the several beginning. people. Yeah, there was like a group of people that I didn't really know. And, and then you were the only other person I knew. But you said at the beginning of your second dream, you were traveling with someone and you didn't know who they were. Yeah, I was I was traveling with maybe a couple of people oh. and and I think we were trying to get I think I knew at that point that we were separated from the rest of our group which you were a part of hmm. okay okay let's do sex exercise of uh your feelings throughout I the thought day. you said sex exercise let's do Zach sex exercise <laughs> Um, okay. In the second dream, I guess I was feeling fine, like walking up. It was like kind of a leisurely stroll. And I, there were, there was another 
there were other people with me. And then there were other people with us who were not with us, if that makes sense. There was like, they were also independently trying to get somewhere. They were trying to get gas or something. I don't know. Um, and when we walked up over this hill, there were the canoes there. And, and then it like got tense. But up to that point, it was kind of leisurely. And like, they were stressed out about getting g- like gas or whatever it was they needed to get. But I was not, we were, we were fine. We were not stressed out. Then he, like, there was a, a standoff or taking the paddle where we needed to take the paddle from the guy and ended up like whacking him over the head. Oh yeah. Who was this guy that you beat? Just a random guy. Like, I don't know. It was not personal. He was going to take our canoe, but I don't think it was personal. <laughs> um, and he told me he was scared of me too. Like there was. It was somebody else who hit him over the head and then I had a paddle and he was like, no, not you. I'm really scared of you. (laughs) (laughs) And like, I felt, um, powerful. That's where the jump to my mind sounds like you were not the vulnerable person in this dream. No, I did not feel threatened then. And then, um, what about when when the guy was creeping on you? I think that at any point the threats I felt were like to other people and that was the threat to me was other people being threatened. I was pretty sure that like, like I could hold my own in that situation with the creepy guy, but I um, was concerned that they were going to turn Victor into meat slop. And maybe I was concerned at at a certain point. I think I was worried that like we'd gotten ourselves into a situation, like a situation that we couldn't get out of. And that is how you felt at the end of the first dream, right? With the, you're trying to cover up the murder. Yeah. That this family friend committed. Yeah. So both dreams end with you not personally vulnerable, but feeling like someone is in trouble and, and you I'm can't protect them. for them. And I'm trying to protect them. You're trying to protect them. You're responsible for their well-being and you can't protect them. Yeah. Anything going on with your dogs in real life? They are always in my dreams that way, though. Like, I always have dreams where it's like, oh, the dog's yeah. like, gotta protect the dog again. Doo, doo, doo. Right. Um, and I've I've been talking to friends with that have similar, like, relationships with their pets in their dreams. Oh, okay. Or it's just always like a, is the stove on kind of anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. So, this might be random and not helpful, but... <laughs> There, there seems to be some relationship with ice cubes and bikinis in the dream Bible. Oh, oh really? really? <laughs> huh. Yeah, I was just looking. I'm just grasping at straws. No, let's, and, uh, let's hear it. I noticed these two specific lines under, uh, there's a bunch under ice cube, but, or under, yeah, ice, ice cubes. To dream of ice shaped like a cube may represent feelings about difficult, unresolved situations that you can't do much about. Um, uncertainty or negativity that is quote unquote frozen or intentionally unaddressed issues left unconfronted or at a standstill. And then in bikini to dream of a bikini represents you or some aspect of your personality that is totally focused on confronting uncertainty or a (laughs) negative situation. The symbolism is based on water reflecting uncertainty or negative situations. The bikini then reflects your personality that is dealing with this. And they cu- they wanted me to take off my bikini. Because <laughs> there was ice in it, right? Yeah. Was there like pervy excuse? Do you remember the color? Of what? The bikini. I wasn't wearing one. But yes, oh, okay. I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why did she come at me? Like, All maybe right. a dumb question. <laughs> well, because it's stupid. It was a yellow polka dotted bikini. <laughs> But like I wasn't wearing one. Okay, it's just I, am, I. That's what I pictured when they were talking about it. Right, but it's in your mind's eye. Yeah. Um, because here it says the color of the bathing suit is very important. Oh God damn it! What the hell is that? Hold on. Got so many dream Bible tabs. It sounded like somebody was drilling into the wall right below me. Oh. Huh. Did Did you hear it? it? Sounded like a motorcycle. Yeah, it sounded like a motorcycle does. No, I was, yeah, I was definitely some kind of, um, power tool. But anyway, it says the color of the bathing suit is very important, but then it only gives blue, red, and white as an example. So dead end. 
<laughs> but uh, no, but I mean, there's I'm a, sure there's something there. Right? Yellow is the, a, in the Dream Bible separately, though. But the thing, the connection between Ice Cube and Bikini, I thought was interesting. That Ice Cubes are about like an uncertain negative situation being intentionally unaddressed and therefore frozen, and then a bikini being about you being focused on confronting an uncertain negative situation. Yeah, that's that's weirdly specific. <laughs> yeah. And they were in the same scene of the same dream. Yeah, it was a it was they were very connected, yeah. So can you think of something in your real life that you're focused on addressing that other people are deliberately freezing you out on? Mm-hmm. Yellow in a dream represents noticing something happening or noticing yourself thinking in a certain way. Um, yellow animals, objects, or clothing all reflect beliefs, feelings, or situations in your life that you are aware of yourself having. Okay. Negatively, the color yellow represents negative thinking patterns that you are aware of in yourself, noticing yourself being afraid, insecure, having a problem, or being disingenuous. Um... I I don't I don't feel like I'm gonna crack this because I feel like I need to go to therapy first. <laughs> think so, here, okay. One thing I think I can maybe say is like like maybe the end there is like to do with like uh, like uh, the fear that certain things or like problems would like come between us. Like, oh, you don't get to sleep in the same bed as your husband anymore. Is there any part of you that sees the the tradition of rearing a family as (laughs) cult-like? Kind of. (laughs) I mean, that is like, that is what that was, though, is that 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 cult was women. A family. Who had been bred. (laughs) it, It was like women, lots of women and their children with the one guy. Right. Like when you. Yeah. The way you described it made me think of. Um. Yeah, the um, uh, children of God. Oh yeah, or just like literally any cult. I was thinking of the the like Mormon cult. I can't. There was a documentary about it recently. Sweet. The uh, FDLS. Yeah, the FDLS. I do F-L-D-S. feel FLDS. Yeah, FLDS. FLDS. Um, I do feel like the two dreams do kind of mirror the same trajectory right so in both dreams you start out traveling with a companion or companions that you're not as connected to then there's a conflict in the first dream it's the theft of your laptop in the second dream it's you beating a guy over the head with a canoe or with a (laughs) with a paddle Mm -hmm. the whole canoe with the whole canoe and then there's some kind of mistake (laughs) right there's some like irreversible mistake in the first dream it's shooting the owl and the second dream it's getting onto the trolley right yeah and then they both end with you trying to like protect someone that can't be protected yeah that's the same dream it's the same pattern it's just like different different skin yeah so it's got to be the same anxiety it is they're the same thing um like your brain like thought they worked through it, and then you're, it was like, oh, she's still asleep. She still has an hour more of sleep, um, and it just did it again, but with a different... Yeah, it really just repeated, and it's interesting looking... D- okay, so looking down at Casper and seeing that rug, it was right before we got on the trolley. Right, and then the rug was... Um the thing you couldn't fix right in the first dream yeah i also remember just now i remembered when i saw it in the second dream i was um concerned that it was gonna like give us away Mm. that's interesting give you away like i was concerned that other people would see it and and know and know some like know know that know about the murder yeah from the other dream i guess so like briefly, huh. like I, I mm. had that thought for a second. I don't know, but it's, it feel I feel like the like, there's there's some importance in in the fact that like this anxiety doesn't have to do with you being weak or backed into a corner. Like a lot of anxieties can be. This anxiety has to do with you letting other people down, despite the power that you have. Yeah, yeah. Which is it about releasing feel- this podcast <laughs> and all the like, <laughs> shit, all the shit, all the legwork you've been doing in getting this off the ground? I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna have to like update people because I feel like I just have more processing to do on this one. 
Yeah, when you were peeing, Victor, I was comparing it to uh, the dream I had a while back that was like super long and complicated, but also had like recurring themes and a storyline. That was the last and, time uh, we recorded, right? Was it? Yeah, I think it was the last the episode, the, right? I think it was the time before that, maybe. But I think it was the last episode. We'll find we out. Didn't, we didn't find out what it was about until we hit stop on the recording, which I can't, I don't think I did get a chance to like say what it was about on the pod but that's true um but it's also fine dreams are fleeting it's gone it'll come back up it's still in my subconscious yeah i don't i don't know that i'm getting anywhere i'm like i'm lo- pulling up dream bible entries just trying to find some way to break into this but i i will read an interesting one for laptop to dream of losing your laptop or having your laptop stolen may reflect fears of having to start over from scratch when you believe you were getting ahead in life. Losing power, employment, or resources that allow you to think about the more interesting areas of your life. Feeling that you've lost the ability to get ahead in life or play in interesting things. Feelings about losing the ability to enjoy success or a professional job. Mm. Yeah, that does resonate. The job also- stuff too. Like it, I, I feel like that describes like how I have felt in my various like jobs that have stuck the jobs that i've spent the most time in as a podcast producer have like you know you you put a lot into something and then i it does not work out and i have to leave for good reasons but it it is kind of like back to square one and i pretty much have a new job like i have a final interview tomorrow with the ceo of the company that i've been interviewing at and like Oh, cool. um, so like maybe it's a reflection of like the fear that or at least that part of the dream is maybe a reflection of like the fear of that coming to an end and having to start over again after that because it really does feel it like when that happens it feels like you have to reset and like you've put a lot of time and energy into something and you have to start over or maybe yeah. the fear that this is going to turn out the same way that the other ones have that you're going to put a bunch of time into it and it's going to be for not again, despite your like, cause you know, you're competent and you've seen yourself do the work over and over again. Just like in this dream, you it's, it's none of the bad shit happening is for lack of your ability. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I do feel confident in my ability to do the work, but it's an unpredictable industry. It is. And it also feels like there's other like life things that could derail. Like if we were to have kids, like, how is that going to affect like uh, that is just objectively a huge amount of energy and time that I am not going to be putting in a career focused place. If we do that, that does change like how I'm going to approach how I'm going to think about my career, I guess. Um, you were yeah, saying earlier, you felt like there was um, this anxiety about something coming between us. Yeah. And um, like a new job is kind of a transition, right? So there might be some some anxiety that just like the change, like the change of our patterns and habits um, might negatively affect our relationship. Like an anxiety of you starting a new job, that's a change. We're going to have to change our daily patterns and everything. Worrying about like maybe conflict coming from that or something. Yeah. And then you have, um, like we've been talking about, like, do we want to have kids? Do we not want to have kids? What's that going to look like? And there has been like a general anxiety about like, I think the main fear there is, well, we've got something really good here and would having kids, um, disrupt that yeah, or, or turn this really good thing into something else. Right? Yeah. And so there might be that anxiety and then also maybe to some degree this anxiety about well does getting a new job change things does like professional changes change things like all of these maybe just like a fear that change will somehow undo what we've got going yeah yeah Yeah, i think so yeah because that cult could be like an unknown new job and like the it was super creepy in the dream, but the whole you won't be sleeping next to your husband thing <laughs> could be like representative of like Vic, you're going to have a new schedule, a new routine if yeah. you get this job. And Victor's not going to be part of that because he has his own job. Hmm. You know what I mean? And whatever time you spend with him during the day, you might be, you know, at work or working from home or whatever. Yeah. 
I guess we can call it that for now. I guess it doesn't fully <laughs> resonate, though. I, I yeah. don't want to try and make it fit. But I don't think we got there. I don't think we got there. I don't Not think we, we even scratched the surface, honestly. There is like an emotional difference between being like, I guess that could be it and like it hitting. Yeah. yeah. Like we did on Victor's dream in the first like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. When you said junkyard, I was like, oh, okay, this is exactly. So yeah, as soon as you heard the word <laughs> embarrassed, you were like, yep. Yeah. That's it. And we haven't gotten there with Olivia right now. I think and I'm going to have to do some off air processing and like maybe we'll open up next week with it or maybe we won't or maybe it'll be too personal and I won't want to share it with you. Maybe your two part dream is a two part episode. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I thought about doing that with the one that I solved off air, but like at this point, like if you're listening right now, I don't know if you even remember what I'm referencing. <laughs> I really do, feel like it was just the last episode we recorded, but probably <laughs> we got to start recording every week. Maybe what are we doing? Yeah, maybe we could do mini sods. <laughs> there you go. It's just one of us like just dropping a little like 15 minute thing in between each yeah, week, like a bonus episode being, for the ones we didn't solve just yeah just being like hey listeners so i figured out the fucking yeah <laughs> <laughs> i feel like it says something uh genuine about what we're doing that we don't crack it every time yeah i feel like if we did then then we're definitely projecting right yeah well we're not making this shit up we're not because it would be, it's it's all, it's literally in our heads, our dreams. So like we could ostensibly be making stuff up for content, but I think that would actually be like infinitely more work than just being honest about our dreams. Yeah, I think right? it'd be hard to make it connect, especially if we're using Dream Bible, which I have a lot of faith in. Yeah, well, we'd be essentially doing a storytelling, like narrative podcast, but acting like it's real. That if is you, so much more work. But it'd be kind yeah. of fun to <laughs> like come up with a fake dream and then read the dream bible entries and tell you what it means that would be a fun exercise just to see if you still get would be honest. somewhere yeah we'd be honest that this wasn't that this was an exercise i wonder though if like the story you wrote would still reveal something about what's going on in your yeah, subconscious that, right that'd be fucking crazy yeah. Yeah, I think I feel like things are falling apart in my end. I don't know if you can hear this dog barking. I can. <laughs> and this this hammering down below. I just realized that somebody moved into the unit right below mine, and so that drill I heard, they're definitely like hanging shelves and shit. Yeah, right that's right. Well, we should probably make sure the dogs haven't destroyed the house and Yeah. Thank you for listening to The Young and the Restless. You can follow us on social media at The Young and the Restless Pod and submit your dreams for interpretation to The Young and the Restless Pod at Gmail. And as we always say, we, we got, got nothing, nothing done, done, but, but at, at least, least we, we had, had a, a terrible, terrible time. take this parasocial relationship to the next level <laughs> well if you leave us a review on apple podcast we'll read it on the show and then we'll know you exist the same way you know we exist that's basically like second base in podcasting <laughs> <laughs> how weird is this gonna get if we just keep going <laughs>